No, we're not happy with it at all. Let's move on to Amazon, and then we'll come back to some general questions in the end. Now, Amazon, I buy a book from you. Uh, I do it actually online. I'm a regular buyer, and when I buy a book, what I do is I get uh, Amazon.co.uk. That's what I'm, I'm told. Is that, is that correct? I mean, I can show you. <laughs> Plenty of, uh, in fact, I think you write to me every day with new offers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's from Amazon.co.uk. Do you accept accept that? Thank you. Do, do, do you accept maybe, that? Chair, maybe I can explain uh, how we're set up as a single European company because I think that's that's very well, useful I just want to background get, for the committee. I think. Well, let me ask me my, your question, the questions, because I'm asking you from a UK perspective, because it's the UK where we seek the taxes in these troubling times. You know, we want everybody to give their fair share, all in it together. So I just want you to explain to me. I buy from Amazon.co.uk. That's where I buy from. So, so Amazon.co.uk uh, is the trading name uh, for Amazon EU SAR, uh, and we but operate. But you're, you're saying to me this is my UK, it's a UK company that I'm buying from. No, you're, you're purchasing for a, from a single European company. We operate a single European. No, I'm, I'm, I'm buying. From, it, says, it says to me. I'll show it to you. It says Amazon.co.uk. Is that um, is that to, is that actually to? to lie to me about the origins of your company? No, 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 not at all. And maybe for, for, for the committee's benefit, uh, I can explain how we're, we, we no, manage our business across. I just want to pursue this issue, because I think I'm buying from a British company. That's what I think when I get a, a, an email from you or when, I, when you advertise. I think I'm buying from a British company. I then agree to purchase something, and um, I get a, 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 an email from you telling me that it's uh, been delivered from a UK, uh, from a UK um, uh, warehouse. That's correct too. Yes, we, we have eight warehouses uh, in the UK. And, and, and I, I'm but, told but how I much I'm going to have to pay for the Royal Mail to mm. deliver the books or the toys or the kettles mm. to my home. Chair, if I may, it may be that it's delivered from a fulfilment centre in the UK, but it could actually be delivered from, uh, excuse me, sorry, warehouse, we, we term, use the term no, fulfilment centre. No, because I'm centre. always asked to pay the UK Royal Mail postage. That's what I get on my bill. So you, you will be uh, charged uh, the, the, the postage as a UK customer, but we may be actually delivering uh, that product from any of our uh, in excess of 20 fulfilment centres uh, across the UK. Uh, well, I can tell the... you, they always come to me with a UK postage stamp on them. I've never had. I am a regular purchaser of books, toys, uh, kettles, blah, blah, blah. It always comes with a UK stamp on it. So, again, Chair, if I can explain, we're running uh, a, a single European uh, business. It comes with a UK. I, am, I believe I'm dealing with a UK company. It comes to me via the Royal Mail with a UK stamp on it. That's what happens. And I tell you, again, I, I buy, I, so far, I might change my mind, I've been purchasing regularly from you in that way. When, when did any book that I ever purchase ever get to Luxembourg? So we, we do not have uh, a have you got books in Luxembourg. No, we, we do not have a fulfilment centre in Luxembourg. We have our European uh, headquarters uh, in Luxembourg, and, and as a single. But the books are here. Uh, the books could be in the UK. They could be in France. If you're purchasing uh, English books, it's very likely that they will be uh, in our in our fulfilment centre. Thank in you. The UK. Well, I do on the whole purchase. I wish I could uh, say I'm uh, I'm fluent in other languages. On the whole, I purchase. So I I buy from I think a UK company. I uh, am billed by the UK company. I'm billed from the UK. No, I, I think you, you'll see that the Amazon.co.uk is a trading trading name for a, a Luxembourg company, which is Amazon. You, I'm billed from style. the UK. I can tell you that's where the U, where it comes from. Right, my I, bill comes from the UK. Do you want to see one of my bills? I've got them here. I, I, I can assure you, Chair, you, you will be billed by a, a Luxembourg company, uh, albeit uh, okay, we, so will, the bills we will be are applying. Printed, you're telling me the bills are printed in Luxembourg. Uh, no, the, the bills themselves may be printed uh, in one of our fulfilment centres. That's one of the types of services that's um, in your warehouse. Warehouses. Apologies, sorry. I, I thought I'd sort okay, of clarify. Okay, so the, bill, the bills are printed in the warehouses, which, on the whole, because I buy English books, are in the UK, and I think I'm buying from a UK uh, company. So, uh, what business is conducted in Luxembourg? So, in Luxembourg, we have our European uh, headquarters. 
um, to give the committee a, a sense that we have in excess of 500 uh, people uh, working uh, in our European headquarters uh, in Luxembourg. Uh, in fact, we're, we're still recruiting very heavily. Uh, we expect to, to add an extra 100 people to our, our European headquarters uh, in Luxembourg. And how many do you have in the UK? So across the UK today, uh, we have about 15,000 uh, employees. The figure we've got is 2,265, to be absolutely precise. That's the figure we've got of the people who employ here. No, if I may, I'd like to correct that, Chair. So we have in excess of 15,000 uh, people uh, 15, working. 15,000? 1,000, yes. Uh, working goodness. in the committee. Uh, if, if I may continue, Chair, we, and we've just announced uh, that we're actually hiring an extra 10,000 seasonal uh, employers to help us with Christmas. Okay. We, and Chair, if I may finish, just one final point. Uh, and and uh, just in September, uh, while we were opening our, our new warehouse in Hemel Hempstead, uh, we announced that we would be also hiring an extra 2,000 people over the next 12 to 24 Well, months. we're delighted you're having business in the UK. I'm delighted that I thought I was buying from a UK company, which was delivered from a UK warehouse, books that have never appeared in any other jurisdiction. Why aren't you paying tax in the UK? So, Chair, we, we do pay tax uh, in the UK. Uh, and Why aren't you paying corporation tax in the UK? We, we pay corporation tax in the, in the UK. How uh, much do you pay in corporation so, tax? So, 0.2% uh, uh, is the figure I've got. Um, uh, well, I, I, I I'm happy. Or something like that. So I've got it wrong. The, the, the accounts of our, our UK company, which is Amazon.co.uk Limited, are, are publicly filed. I'm very happy. Uh, I think for 2011, um, we had revenues of, of 207 uh, million. Uh, we made an after-tax uh, profit um, of 1.2 million, uh, and we recorded a tax expense of 1.8 million pounds. Come in on this. Uh, can we just follow uh, Chair's paper chase a bit further? Because um, clearly uh, she's under the uh, understandable perception that she's buying from the UK. Can you talk about the invoicing and how that works and yeah. how how the money flows and how the money flows then back to the UK for delivery and so on? What is the what are the actual so, arrangements? See, I, I may uh, what I was trying to do at the outset was explain that we're operating a single European company, which is a, I think to. Uh, your, your point uh, that companies uh, are retail uh, business across Europe, which is uh, known as Amazon EU SAR. That the counts, and that's a pan European business uh, with operations. Uh, we have five uh, websites across Europe. We're serving tens of millions of customers uh, across uh, the whole of Europe, as well as sellers. Um, uh, and, and that's our, our principal trading company uh, in Europe. Uh, the, the accounts for that, that company are publicly available uh, in Luxembourg, and I'm very happy to talk to those accounts as well. But, so, but uh, when Chair buys her book, the money comes to Luxembourg, and you just essentially pay a small amount back to the UK to have it delivered. Is that correct? So the, the company we have uh, in the UK, Amazon.co.uk Limited, is a service company for group companies, including uh, our Luxembourg uh, European uh, And how is, how is Amazon.co.uk Limited? What, what is its income? How does it get its income? So as, and as I, I mentioned, these are uh, publicly available. They're filed in, in company's house. Uh, so for, for 2011, uh, the, the, the turnover of Amazon.co.uk Limited uh, was 207 uh, million uh, pounds. Uh, From we, doing what? What? How did it uh, get the? So that's essentially uh, for providing services uh, in the UK uh, for for uh, the uh, Amazon uh, Europe uh, companies. Its services such as operating the, the, the fulfillment centres, which is going to be receiving inventory, picking, packing, uh, and, and then passing on those products uh, to our carriers. And what's declared in Luxembourg sales into the UK? So, uh, to, to, to the point, as, as European company, what we, we uh, file in our accounts uh, are our Europe-wide uh, revenues. Uh, for 2011, uh, we had Europe-wide revenues of 9.1 billion uh, euros. Um, we made, uh, and so if I may, I'll give the, 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 the committee some, some other data points there. Uh, we made a, a profit after tax of 20 million uh, euros on those sales. 20 million on a 9 billion? Yes. Just can, I, can, I, can you answer my question? Out of the 9 billion, mm -hmm. how, I mean, it's, it's, it looks like a peanuts profit. Presumably that was all exported to some tax haven. No, not at all. Oh, where did it go then? 
uh, th 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 that is the profit that we make. Uh, no, on, on say it again. How much? On well, nine point what billion you made? I mean, maybe chair, maybe to, just to, to give you a parallel, I, I can talk to our, our, our worldwide figures uh, for 2011. Uh, our worldwide. No, don't befuddle us with that. We we really care about the UK because we think you're not paying the right tax in the UK. So that what I'm interested in, you how much of your Luxembourg business is sales into the UK? Mm. Uh, fortunately, uh, we've never broken out uh, figure, revenue figures on a country or website basis. You can't be serious. We, we, we operate a, a pan-European business. Those are the only only figures we have ever broken out. I used out to be a finance director of a pan-European business, and if somebody told me, what do you ask me, what do you sell in each country, I'd be fired immediately if I didn't have the answer to that question. That's so the, the, ridiculous. The, those are numbers that, that we, we've never disclosed uh, publicly. Um, Will you disclose them privately? I, I'm very happy, should, should the committee wish, to, 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 to come back and see whether it's possible to disclose them privately to the committee. That's uh, totally um, evasive. Austin, Steve. Did you say you, you don't know the, the sales and revenue in each jurisdiction, or you didn't, don't want to tell the world? Uh, it, it, what I said was that we, we've never publicly disclosed uh, any uh, sales yeah, figures yeah, for, for those so jurisdictions. Cool. So you do know? So you, you, for instance, make I'm a cost-benefit analysis as to whether it's uh, worth your while invested in capital, say, building a new warehouse at Milton Keynes or wherever. You, so you'll make, you have a business case for each individual jurisdiction, each region. So we'd certainly have a business case for making a, a large investment, such as investing, uh, building a new fulfilment centre. In fact, we're, we're currently looking to build three new fulfilment centres uh, in the UK. And obviously, we present a very uh, specific building you know, business case on each of those fulfilment centres. Okay, can I just come back uh, for Mr. Swales's questions? Because I think I'm, I'm fascinated by this idea that uh, this. Uh, entity in Switzerland which in 2010 employed 134 people uh, as opposed to 15,000 in the UK is the engine room of this business uh, in terms of value and um, tax liability. Uh, what about payroll? Where's payroll? Uh, where's the, the centre of activity for, in terms of finance and payroll? So if, if, if I may just uh, correct, it, it's in Luxembourg, uh, Luxembourg not in Switzerland. Sorry. Uh, it's pardon. not 134. Well, uh, we're in excess of 500 uh, okay, people today, 500. Uh, uh, as and, we're, and we're 15, hiring. As opposed to 15,000. Um, um, where's finance and payroll? So all for the UK business. Yeah. So, so all the, 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 the strategic functions uh, for our business in Europe are based in Luxembourg. That could be uh, our retail business, our, our, our third-party business, our transportation teams, our customer service, no, HR, where, where finance, is sorry, it's HR, where finance. Where is finance and payroll for your UK operations? Where is human resources and web design for your UK operations? Okay. Maybe I, I can come to, come to that. Uh, working for Amazon.co.uk Limited, we do also have uh, people looking at those issues supporting the European company. Uh, that, that's a very circuitous answer, yeah. I mean, to a straightforward question. We're, t we're following this sort of audit trail here with the book, okay? The, the book is billed uh, from the UK, it's packed from the UK, it's bought in the UK from a domain name which is, ends with .co.uk, okay? I'm asking you, we're talking about the value added to the business, is it in the UK or is it overseas? So, and I'm asking you, it, are the support functions for that business in the UK? So, so the, the employees of the UK entity uh, uh, are, are, are basically working for Amazon.co.uk and they are being uh, re rewarded for that in the revenue figures of the, the UK company. So if I'm, I'm Joe Bloggs, I want a job driving a forklift truck at the Milton Keynes warehouse. Who interviews me? Who processes my application form? Who ticks my uh, diversity form, whatever, to get a job with you? Is it, it, is it in Europe or is it in the UK? So I, I, I'm not familiar with the details of, of that, but I can certainly find out uh, exactly how that would work. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I don't know how uh, a, a specific applicant would be. somebody in the yeah. UK, do you go through uh, the recruitment process in the UK or in Luxembourg? Yeah, you, you would clearly go through, if you're working for the UK company, you would go through the recruitment process with the UK company. 
So, and who pays those people in terms of their the monthly salary? salary? That, that is paid by the UK company. So, okay, so we've got the recruitment and payroll and, and finance and HR are all in the UK. I don't think that's a fair representation. I think what you have is on a European, on a European-wide basis, all these functions <coughs> are led uh, by people who are physically based in Luxembourg, working. Yeah, but they don't uh, go for, for the, the job company. interview in Luxembourg, do they? It, I mean, if, it, you're, if, you're, if you're driving a forklift truck and shifting books in, in Peterborough or Milton Keynes in the warehouse... But you would be going for the job interview uh, with, the, with the UK uh, limited company because that would be who your, your employer would be. Which w leads one to believe that that is where essentially the core activity is in generating the wealth. No, I, I disagree again. I think what we're, we're operating is a pan-European business. Uh, so, for example, uh, that person working in the fulfillment centre uh, in the UK may actually be shipping products uh, that are purchased off our French website uh, by a customer in Belgium. Uh, and I think that's very important for the, the committee to understand that that's how we operate as a business. Uh, you've already said that if they're buying an English product, uh, an English book in English yeah. in the UK, it is most likely that uh, that will be fulfilled from a UK warehouse. Presumably the same is true for a French book in French, published by a French publisher and sold in France to a French, pub, uh, to a French buyer, isn't it? Uh, th th there are two points I think I I I'd say to that. Obviously, one of the things uh, with, with Madam Chair, when she, she ordered her book on Amazon, one of the things we were keen to do is obviously deliver that to her as quickly as possible. Uh -huh. So for English books, many of them obviously will stock uh -huh, in our fulfillment centres in the UK, exactly so we can offer same-day delivery uh -huh, to, to our customers. Uh, I, I think we all understand that if yeah. you had, a, if you tried to fulfil let, let, let for, for Mrs. Hodge from your yeah. from your from your <laughs> fulfilment centre in Tierra del Fuego, it would take a lot longer. What we're really trying to get at, and what Mr. Jackson was trying to get at, is where is the underlying economic activity, the components of which create what we all know as added value, and which eventually creates value added tax, or would if it weren't books. And it seems from your answers that the answers to those questions are in the UK. You said that the people who work in the UK are employed by Amazon.co.uk Limited, that company. They're paid by that company, presumably with money that that company has in the UK, correct? Well, it's money, it's revenues that that company makes. Right, but in the UK. Let me, no, let me make clear. It is the revenues, for example, from, from uh, Madam Chair's purchase of the book were revenues that accrued to, to Amazon uh, EU sell, not to the UK company. So the, the money, which if I'm if I'm Mr. Jackson's forklift truck driver in Milton Keynes and I'm working each month and I get paid my salary at the end of the month, that money goes into my British bank account. Where does it come from? Does it come from a British bank account controlled by Amazon? Yes or no? Yeah, so it, it would, uh, and I can confirm this to the committee, uh, but I'm almost certain it would come from Amazon.co.uk Limited. It, it, so it could, does it come from a British bank account yes. controlled by Amazon? Yes. So it's not a case that the, the people in Luxembourg have to wire over some money each month to pay this chap's salary. It's actually sitting in a UK bank account controlled by Amazon, and that's where the money originates or, st or because we have a starts its journey that ends up in the forklift because driver's bank account. Amazon.co.uk is a service company uh, in the UK providing services uh, to Amazon uh, EU SAR uh, for which it receives uh, payment. Okay. Control Orders General, then I've got um, Austin, Steve, Nick, Fiona, Ian. Thank you, Chair. Just a couple of uh, very quick questions. So. The quite low turnover in the UK is because the UK company is based, the way you have it set up is the UK company provides services and its customer is the European company for their services. Is that right? Okay, what, so. One they, of, of right, group okay, but they get an invoice, they send their invoice to, to, uh, to um, Luxembourg and get paid, and that's where the money that goes into the bank account more or less comes from. They're not, they're not handling the books, they're not, they don't have ownership in the books. I pay in pounds, actually. I know, but I'm not, I know, I know, but I'm just trying to, that's Sorry. just bank, bank details. And so when you, the services that this UK company are doing are essentially handling services, they don't actually own the book at any no. point. The, the, the UK company does not own the inventory. Right, I'm only just saying that for clarity. Now, my second point, if I may bring you back, I'm sorry, because I heard the discussion, 
You know perfectly well what sales are happening everywhere in Europe. Otherwise, you couldn't possibly run this company, the advertising or anything else. So if you're not giving that information, it's because you choose not to. That's right, isn't it? No. Uh, let, let, let me stress, we're, we're operating on a pan-European basis. I know, but you know the information. You can't mm. possibly pretend, and it's really quite annoying to listen to, that you can possibly be running a strategy in Europe and not know your territorial profitability. You're, you're doing advertising, you're, you're putting warehouses on the assumption of sales volume. Don't come on, it's actually quite insulting to everybody's intelligence to say that you don't know what sales volumes are going to be in the territory. That's just not feasible as an argument. So you can't possibly as, as advance I, as, that. As I don't I think anyone who knows anything about business would accept that line. As I said previously, sorry. it's not numbers that we, we, we do disclose, but I'm very happy to go back to the company uh, and see whether we're, we're willing to... So so just check on the CNAG answer. that you don't disclose to the SEC country-specific data. You don't file, in your filings to the SEC, you don't put, for example, what UK earnings would be. I, I'm not aware that we have uh, that in our uh, UK ICC filings. You see, what we're getting at, and you can see the, 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 these conversations, is your entire economic activity is here in the UK. I even pay in pounds. I do pay in pounds. It never comes off my bank account in euros. Uh, your entire activity is here, yet you pay no tax here. And that really riles us. It riles us. So, can I clarify? We, we do pay uh, corporation tax, uh, our accounts uh, for Amazon.co.uk. Tiny bit in uh, relation uh, uh, to your... I, I, I mean, you won't tell us I, I yourself. I recognise Tiny that, bit. Uh, uh, the other thing I would also highlight, uh, we, we've paid uh, in excess of 100 million uh, in payroll taxes uh, in the fast, last five years. We've paid uh, tens of millions in business rates uh, in the past five years. And I've heard this argument before. Let me just kill this argument because it really makes me cross. On the one hand, so does every other business. So the community-based uh, bookshop that you're putting out of business also pays business rates, also pays its PAYE, also pays VAT, actually probably pays VAT in a way that you don't, and, and uh, you in the same way, and you're making it uncompetitive. And the other thing is, you depend on the services that come out of the tax you pay. So, you know, you depend on the ability of your uh, of, of, of getting your goods around, so you've got to get the, truck, the roads in place. You depend on all those things. And probably worst of all, both you and Mr. Alsted employ people on probably minimum wage, if we're lucky, and then we, the taxpayer, pick up the tax credit bill for that too. So we're putting a lot of money back into the people you, you, you put, and you're not putting enough tax into our economy. That's what's riding us all. I don't... Sorry, I shouldn't have done that, but Austin. No, I thought I was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have to say, <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a satisfied customer, uh, and I love the service you provide. When you write to me and say, having bought this biography of John Major, you may be interested also <laughs> in Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> But I, like, like the chair, uh, I'm interested in why you pay so little tax, corporation tax particularly, uh, in this country so that we can pay some kind of benefit to all the booksellers you've put out of business because undoubtedly you've put a large number of booksellers, some of them local in my case, uh, out of business. And I don't get, frankly, from all this uh, interview, why Luxembourg is so lucky I mean, the books are here, the warehouses are here, the billing is here, the business is here, the customers are here. There are uh, 134 staff on our figures in Luxembourg and 2,266 uh, in the UK. According to Richard Murphy of uh, Tax Research uh, UK, in 2010, uh, 1,228 million pounds of the profit was generated in the UK and 2.2 million uh, in, uh, in Luxembourg and yet uh, you, you pay tax in Luxembourg and not here. Now I'll put it to you, that is really because you can offset a lot more costs against tax in Luxembourg and in 2010 the figures seem to be uh, that 7.56 billion uh, of, uh, of profits uh, were an offset against that was 7.4 billion of charges 
So effectively, you're escaping pretty well scot-free in Luxembourg. That's why you're there, isn't it? And that's why we've got all this business about favouring Luxembourg. So, so in, may I address uh, <laughs> various points uh, one by one? Firstly, uh, I, I'd like to again uh, re refute that uh, we're putting booksellers out of business. I think what we're saying uh, is that the internet retail industry is bringing huge benefits uh, to consumers uh, across Europe uh, in terms of price, in terms of selection, uh, in terms of convenience. Uh, and we're very much focused on, on continuing to invest uh, to make sure that consumers uh, can benefit from, from, the, the, from uh, internet uh, retail. On, on the figures uh, you quoted, uh, I, I really don't know where they've come from, so I can't uh, comment on that. As I said earlier, uh, our accounts, both for Amazon.co.uk Limited uh, and an, uh, Amazon EU SAR, are publicly available. I'd be very happy uh, to provide uh, the committee uh, with a copy of those. Uh, I would like to confirm we do pay corporation tax uh, in the UK, uh, and obviously we also pay corporation tax uh, on any profits also uh, we make uh, for Amazon EU SAR. Um, I think that covers uh, most of the points. I don't know whether I've missed any of that. Okay, Steve. Um, who owns the Luxembourg company? So the Luxembourg uh, is owned by uh, a holding company which is a subsidiary of uh, group companies. So where's that located? So the, the holding company is also based in Luxembourg. That's also in Luxembourg. Okay. And it seems a slightly artificial arrangement, isn't it? Yeah, I, and I'm very I'm not familiar with the details uh, of, of the holding company, but I'd be very happy to come back to the committee. Right. So what's the uh, effective tax rate that you pay in Luxembourg? Sorry, I didn't hear What's the question. effective tax rate you pay in Luxembourg? So our, our worldwide, and I do have the figures here, our worldwide... No, no, in Luxembourg. In Luxembourg. So... Uh, I would have to, I'd need to calculate it, apologise, but uh, uh, so our, our, for 2011, uh, our um, net profit after tax was 20 million uh, on revenues uh, of 9.1 billion, uh, and we paid. So, uh, can you just say that, that again? In Luxembourg, your yeah. profit was 20 million. So our, our revenues uh, across Europe for 2011 for Amazon EU SAL. Uh, was 9.1 uh, billion euros. Our profit after tax uh, was 20 million uh, euros, uh, and the tax expense. So, so, so it's 20. Yes, that's it. And maybe to that point, I, I point out to the committee we, we are at the moment investing very, very significantly, uh, not just in the UK, uh, but across Europe, uh, which may be reflected. Uh, in these numbers. Uh, sorry, uh, could, sorry, Jay, could I continue, please? Um, so, do sorry, you have preferred equity certificates then in Luxembourg? I, I wouldn't know, but I'm, I'm very happy to find out and come back to you. Maybe, maybe I can finish on the point uh, so that the tax we paid, uh, and this is a tax expense uh, recorded on, on our accounts for 2011. What I'm interested in is, is how you're stripping out the profit in Luxembourg, because that's the, the impression. You know, if, you, if it's 9.1 billion going to 20 million, that suggests you're stripping out the profit in Luxembourg. Who owns the holding company? I, I need to come back uh, to the committee on, on those so, details. So, so the, pro the profit's going into a company, it's then going to a holding company. What about the titling goods from affiliates or third parties? Sorry, sorry. Uh, 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 that's another unacceptable answer. Yeah. You're telling us you don't know the corporate structure yeah. of your company. So really? I, I, I do know really? the corporate structure of the European company. I, I work for the European company, but I'd be happy to come back. All, uh, we, to all we need to know who owns the holding company. You're the director of public policy. It's incredible that you wouldn't know who owns the holding company? It's just not credible. I'm very happy to come back to the committee. Well, you can um, tell that we're not happy. Yeah. Do you know who owns it? Uh, no, I will come back to the committee. Do you answer. know who owns? No, I, I personally Do you know who it. owns? No, I don't. But it's where the money goes, isn't it? Hasn't somebody behind you? Haven't you brought advisors with you? Yeah. No. Okay, well, we've probably got another, I don't know, 40 minutes, an hour to go, so I'm sure one of the advisors could go and make a call. Uh, and come back to us in 10, 15 minutes with the answer with the Chair's permission. It can't be too difficult to phone uh, head office and find out who owns it, can it not, Mr Cecil? I will certainly provide that, that information to the Okay, team. so we can have that before we close today. I think that will be useful. So could I come back to uh, what I'm interested really is into where the profit's going and how it's being stripped out. Um, can we sort of look at it in a different way through titling goods? 
from third parties and affiliates. Could you talk through how that is handled? Uh, again, I'm not quite sure what you're specifically talking about. I mean, I think it's very clear uh, uh, what our revenues, what our profits, uh, and what tax expense we've accounted for uh, across Europe. Uh, the, the goods uh, that are in our fulfilment centres across Europe, uh, the inventory uh, does belong to Amazon New Style, does not belong to, to the, the uh, local entities or that we may have uh, across Europe. So why is the UK not a branch? I, I'm, I'm not a, a detailed tax expert on that question, but again, I'd be very happy to come yeah. back to that. Tax issue. Yeah, because it's a tax, tax it's issue. not a business issue, is it? Yeah. It's getting structured for tax. Okay, okay. shall I move on? Yeah. Nick. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. I'll ask this question again. Of the 9.1 billion of European sales in 2011, what were your sales in the UK in 2011? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, if I may, I'll give the same reply to the committee. I will come back to the committee, uh, and it, it, it's possible to show that figure and disclose that. Can you say that again? So, I, I will come back to the committee, uh, and I will see whether it's possible to disclose that figure. We have not disclosed uh, those figures ever publicly, either on a country basis or on a website basis. What, what's this confidential, what your earnings are by country? What's, so, I mean, I might be missing something. Um, being a generalist, but what, what's the the, the, the the secret that pertains to country by country data? Yeah, th this is how we've we've uh, disclosed uh, our financial data over a number of years now. Uh, we have never broken out uh, revenues on a country by country. So what are you data. hiding? I, we're not hiding anything, Chair. And I, I said I'm very happy uh, to come back to the Chair on a confidential basis and see whether it's possible to disclose that okay, data. That's the most ridiculous answer I've heard for months and months and months on this committee. It's just pathetic. Of the 9.1 billion sales you made in 2011, you said you made £20 million after tax. What did you make before tax? Uh, I, I would assume. Uh, again, go back to the figures uh, as we uh, had a, a tax uh, expense that was around uh, 8 million uh, that we're making a profit uh, uh, of the two combined. But I need to check. Uh, so, so you made a profit of 30 million on revenue of 9 billion. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, we're no, we, we made, what I'm saying is we made an after tax profit of 20 million on that specific. So, what, what was your. Profit before tax. Before tax. I don't have that specific number there, but I'm happy to provide it. You don't have anything. I mean, honestly, you come to us with absolutely no information. What's your job? So I'm director of public policy for Amazon across Europe. Well, I mean, I think what we we'll continue this afternoon, but I think what we're going to have to do is order somebody to come who can give us answers to the questions well, we I'm ask. Very, I, I'm and we will order somebody to appear before us who does that, because it's just not acceptable. I don't think, I don't know what you take us for, but, but uh, we're not, you're, you know, we need proper answers to perfectly proper questions which are trying to establish the economic activity in this country and therefore what would be a reasonable corporation tax due. That's our job. We, you know, the idea that you come here simply don't answer the questions, pretend ignorance, is just not on. It's awful. I'm very happy to provide uh, the committee with any responses to these questions. No, you. We, you should have come. I can't believe you've come without the information. Or they deliberately send you uh, and we will order somebody who can answer them in public. What do you publish regarding the holding company? What data do you publish? Okay, I'd have to come back. Uh, oh. apologise. <laughs> well, that's where the money's going. I mean, the money's going from one Lux and Curve company into the holding company. And what we want to try and get visibility on is the flow of money from that company into the holding company. I, I, and it, it, it does seem remarkable. You don't I, know who I don't have the accounts for the holding company getting. in front of me, uh, but I, I will make sure that uh, we provide yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. we'll, we'll have to come back to this. I'm just going to go through quickly, and then we'll go to Google, and then we've got some general questions. Fiona, Ian, if you can get, have a chance. I'm struck by here is that you have a lot of satisfied customers who aren't trying to do Amazon down me. It's in my constituency, what I thought was the headquarters of the company, which allegedly is in Luxembourg, but nevertheless, you know, when I'd been taken around by Brian McBride and his successor, Christopher North, I wasn't told that this is a Luxembourg-based company. I was saying, here we are developing lots of products. It didn't sound to me like an operation 
which ran fulfilment centres, i.e. warehouses all around Britain. It sounded to me like a company which was kind of being grown here, which got its ideas here, which made the bulk of its sales here. Are you saying that they misled me? I, I, I wasn't uh, with uh, Mr. O'Brien. I'm sure Brian would have never uh, misled you. As I said, we're, we're operating on a, uh, a, a single European company basis. We do have Amazon.co.uk Limited, uh, which operates the fulfillment centres. Uh, and obviously, in your constituency, uh, we have our corporate headquarters of, uh, for the UK. Uh, we're delighted to be there and employ you know, hundreds of people. Do you understand why? we think, particularly when we aren't able to get detailed answers from you, that a company which has 30 times as many employees in the UK as in the place where it's allegedly headquartered, which developed itself in the UK. I mean, I remember when the first picking centre was in Slough, um, and which kind of developed a growth in the UK which has outstripped, I think, I'm right in saying, other European markets. Do you understand why we think that there is a deliberate structuring of the company to make it pretend that the USA is just a, an operation which is warehousing and sending and not is in any way an engine of this company? Do you understand why we're suspicious? Because we are, although we're happy customers. So, so let, again, let me make it very clear. The, the, the fact that we're running a pan-European business actually has huge benefits to, to customers, to sellers, uh, and to our suppliers. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. With, with a supplier, we will list their product. We will source on a pan-European basis. Rather than just list on the UK website, we will list on all our websites. The UK website, the French website, the German website, the Italian website, and the, and the Spanish website. Uh, that is mean we're driving uh, you know, greater reach, uh, greater sales. But you've just like, said to us that you can't tell us how much well, sales each of those websites generate. Because we, we, we and customers can shop off any of those websites. Uh, they don't need to shop off the UK website. Absolutely. I understand that. And when I am buying Christmas presents for my relatives in America, I shop off the American website. Yes. I completely understand that. But each website must know what profits it returns or what sales it returns because, frankly, we think you manipulate your profits and that they are a separate thing to your sales. So and you don't seem to be able to either tell us what sales each website uh, uh, returns and what profits each web website returns. Those are two questions which, had I been coming before this committee, I would have known the answer to. They're not as serious. Uh, they've sent you up as a sort of, I don't know what. Yeah. You're not serious here. Not at all. Well, no, I, don't, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree with you, Chair. <laughs> I mean, it's outrageous, and um, we are a very busy committee, but we will ensure that you, uh, A, we want an answer to the question that we have. provide answers to all the questions you uh, No, we want to answer this afternoon to the question about the holding company, and uh, B, we will expect a serious um, uh, person to appear for us, and we will order them um, uh, and do that as soon as we can after recess, probably on a Thursday morning. Right, Google. And then we, uh, oh, sorry, did you want to have a Yeah, can I, just, can I just, can I just, because there's, out of it is. there's one, well, I may not be, uh, be interesting to hear, won't it? Um, one area we haven't touched on at all at the moment uh, so far is VAT. And I would just like to know from you what, uh, because but there's no VAT on books, right. but Amazon sell plenty of other things and they're killing lots of retailers in uh, other fields now. We've just seen Comet go under. Um, <laughs> Can you tell me what VAT I pay if I buy an electrical item from uh, from Amazon? What rate of VAT? Uh, the, the point about uh, our competitors, uh, we, we strongly believe that internet retail uh, is uh, highly beneficial to, to consumers. And I'm not against internet retail, by the okay. way. It's, uh, it's whether it's a level playing so field. So on consumer yeah. electronics, uh, products, which I think was your, your question, yeah. uh, for, for a sale to a customer uh, in the UK, we would apply uh, the standard UK VAT rate, uh, uh, and that would be collected on behalf of the UK, the UK government. Even, even though I'm buying from a Luxembourg company? Yes, so how, how was it that two weeks ago you were pulled up for um, 
selling uh, online um, books and only charging 3% VAT, even though you were charging British publishers 20% VAT, you were then only charging uh, 3% um, VAT. You were using the Luxembourg tax rate to sell those. So is that something you do across other product lines or was, it, or was this a one-off? So, so I, th I think you're referring to consumer electronics versus e-books, uh, free books. I'm talking uh, about the VAT. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the VAT applicable to consumer electronics versus e-books. Uh, free books, um, uh, by law, we're required to apply the Luxembourg uh, VAT rate on e-books because we are a Luxembourg-based company, uh, which we do, uh, which is 3% uh, VAT. So, so anyone in the UK selling e-books that has to charge 20% has a, a massive disadvantage against yeah, yourself. We think e-books e is a, is a, a, a very uh, nascent, growing market segment. It's highly, highly competitive. Uh, there are many uh, providers, both of devices and content, uh, out oh, there. And how, how did you feel about the EU ruling that said you, were, you had to uh, increase? Luxembourg wasn't allowed to do this anymore. They were given 30 days to increase it to 15%. How do you feel about I, that? I can't comment on, on a ruling uh, of the Commission. I think what we would Say is from our perspective, we firmly. By November, Sorry. you will get. You have to decide whether you're going to challenge it. Are you challenging that ruling? Well, I don't, I don't, sorry, Chair, I don't think we're challenging uh, the ruling. Uh, it's, 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 Amazon's not a party to, to, to these pre proceedings. I think well, what I would say is, is we firmly believe that a book is a book, uh, but, regardless but one, of... But one thing you are in charge of, it's obviously not finance, you're in charge of public policy, and you don't know whether you're going to challenge an EU ruling. Isn't that a public policy I, I don't, matter? I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think you can challenge uh, such an EU ruling, uh, I'm not sure whether that's actually possible. Are you being investigated, by the way? Is Amazon being investigated in a number of jurisdictions as we speak? So I think we publicly disclosed... Your tax affairs. Yeah, so we publicly disclosed... We, we are audited, very standard practice, in a whole range of jurisdictions. My, are you, you being investigated in the USA? No, I, I can't comment are on you being in, specifics. You can't comment or you are or you aren't? No, as I said, we, we, we're regularly audited in a number of jurisdictions. Are you being investigated? That's my question, in the USA. I, I can't comment on any specific investigations. You don't know? No, are I you being comment. investigated in China? I, I can't comment on... on at, well, I'm sorry, Chair, I'm not, not familiar well, with... Well, your what's... public policy, you might know this. Are you being investigated in China? I, I'm not aware of any investigations against us in China. Are you sure that's the truth? Personally, I'm not aware of any. Are you inv being investigated in Germany? I'm not aware of any investigations in Germany. Are you being investigated in France? Uh, we have publicly declared in our most recent findings uh, uh, that we have received an assessment uh, from the French tax authorities uh, and we dispute uh, that assessment. Uh, you are. Uh, in Japan? Uh, I'm not aware of whether that's it personally. And in Luxembourg? Uh, I'm, no, not as far as I'm aware. Okay, let's move on to Google. Um,